each and every day. You know that I'm willing to run on all the way. If I falter while I'm trying, don't be angry. Just let me say, you know that I'm willing oh, to run on all the way. Oh, all the way, Lord, all the way, all the way, each and every day. You know that I'm willing, Lord, to run on all the way. If I falter while I'm trying, please don't be angry. Just let me say, you know that I'm willing, oh, to run on all the way. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm, I'm willing to run all the way, regardless of whatever goes on, whatever happens. Glory to God. Uh, ain't nothing and nobody going to steal my praise. Glory to God. In this difficult season, thank God I still have my praise. Glory to God. I still have my praise. And uh, my praise undergirds my joy. It puts a, a protection of fence around my joy because I got to have my joy. That's my strength. Amen. So I praise God. Pastor, you already said that Sunday. I know, but it, it ministered to me, so I'm saying it again. <laughs> praise God to everybody. I'm so glad to see you all on Bible study tonight. Uh, so grateful that you all find Bible study so important to your lives. Amen. So necessary. So I praise God for each one of you. And I want to thank God for the you know, first lady, for the church mother, assistant church mother, to all of the elders that are online, missionaries. Glory to God, deacons, deaconess, uh, saints, and friends. Glory to God. We praise God for each one of you. Love you so very, very much. So grateful for you. I mean, collectively and individually. I'm so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for a family that that supports one another, that encourages one another, that you know, forgives and, and grows and helps and supports one another. It's so important. And I want to say thank you so very, very much very much so very very much glory to god um and i wanted to also just let you know that the lord is blessing us glory to god sometimes when you're in it you can't tell what god is doing it's not until you get back and you look back over your life as somebody said and you begin to think things over you realize that you know i'm really blessed glory to god thank thank god brought me through some stuff you know that could have took me out glory to god i could have been in that accident or glory to god i i did have an illness but god healed me before i even real realized how sick i could have been glory to god uh, i'm so i'm so very very grateful so when, when i when i think of the goodness of jesus i know i didn't make that up but all that he's done for me you know my little soul cries out hallelujah i'm so grateful for salvation I'm so grateful for, glory to God, for folks that love me. I'm so grateful for folks that I love. I'm so grateful that people care about me. I'm so grateful, glory to God, that, uh, you know, some of y'all, I know you are. You can't say you're not. Some of y'all praying for me when, when I don't even know about it, glory to God. Some of y'all calling out my name, glory to God. I'm so grateful to have people calling my name, glory to God, praying for me, lifting me up, lifting my wife up. I'm grateful for my wife. I want you to know I'm grateful for Lady Simpkins. You know, she is a wonderful woman of God. I'm so grateful for these 49 years of marriage. Glory to God. When I look back over, glory to God, all that God has brought us through. We were talking about it the other day. You know, looking back all of the things that God brought us through, all of the difficult times, glory to God, and 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 the, and the hard times and the times that just seemed hot, glory to God, almost looked like they were going to burn us up. But God kept us in the middle of that fire, glory to God, and then he kept us in love with one another. And I'm, I'm grateful for that, glory to God. We've had some difficult days, some days when I, you know, y'all, it might be hard for y'all to believe this, but there were some days I really got on her nerves. Uh, I really, <laughs> there were some days I absolutely upset her, glory to God, 
And uh, I'm so grateful, glory to God, that she hung in there with me. She didn't she didn't kick me to the curb. Or, glory to God, rub me over with the car. Glory to God, none of that. Amen. She just, glory to God, gave me grace and uh, allowed me to be here today. I'm just telling you this because, uh, glory to God, don't matter how long you've been married. Amen. The enemy does not stop trying to throw stuff up. Stop trying to start stuff. Amen. And uh, I'm so grateful that the Lord has given us uh, amen, a love for one another and uh, a commitment, a commitment for one another, to one another, commitment. So praise God for each one of your own. Uh, and I want to thank you for that. We're going to go into Bible study tonight. Uh, and I'm very, very excited about this. Uh, this young man is going to be uh, teaching tonight. This is his first time doing this. Glory to God. And we're going to all support him. We're going to all help him. Glory to God. We're going to ask questions and Glory to God, find scriptures. I'm not sure how he's going to run it. I'm not telling him how to run it, but I'm saying, glory to God, we are uh, supporters of one another. How many know that's right? And the truth of the matter is, when you when you, when you you get the mic, the proverbial mic in your hand, glory to God, sometimes you forget your own name. Amen. Uh, you get a little nervous. It'd be like, oh my God, what am I doing here? Uh the Lord is um, my, he my shepherd, that's right. And, you know, so you just forget about stuff, but I want you to know, glory to God, that if we pray for him, uh, I'm sure, no doubt in my mind, that God's going to bless all of us uh, by what God has given him. Uh, you should have in your, uh, your newsletter, everybody got sent out the Bible study, so you'll be able to look at it although we're going to put it on the screen, but it's good for you to be able to look at it and uh, kind of see what's going on uh, with what he's put together to serve us, amen, as a meal tonight. And so I want to ask everybody, if you will clap your hands and put some hearts up and receive, uh, glory to God, the deacon, Ricardo, J. Burnett, come on and do that for us, amen? Come on and do that. Amen. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> Amen. First, giving glory and honor to God, the head of my life, to the pastor, first lady, to all the saints of God. I just thank God for this opportunity to come before um, our Solid Rock family and, and to, to, to step outside of my comfort zone. You know, tonight I'm going to be teaching on faith, and it takes a lot of faith to come before you guys, you know. It's not something that I um, strive to do, but um, I want God to be able to use me. I want to be able to grow, and I want to be able to serve in a in a more efficient manner. So in order to do that, then I need to step out in faith and, and, and um, follow through on the assignments that he's given me to do. Um, can we have a, um, a word of prayer first? Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, just come right before you, Father, thanking you for this day of life, Father, thanking you for all that you've done and continue to do, Father, how you continue to bless me, Father. Father, I ask that you take away any anxiety, any stress, any nerves, Father, that may be coming, Father. I ask that you grant me what to say and how to say, Father, so that the people of God will be blessed, Father. Oh, Father, give me the faith and the confidence I need in order to share this information with them so that somebody's faith will be enriched and be enhanced, Father. And I give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just thank, um, I thank, like I said, my pastor, I thank Missionary Hunter um, for this opportunity to come before you guys. And tonight we're going to be teaching on um, on faith. You know, faith is a, such a, a vital and important part of our walk with God. You know, it will keep us through the difficult times, through all the trials and tribulations that we go through. We need to hold on to our faith no matter what, knowing that God has us and, and he's going to be there for us. He's going to make sure that no matter what we go through, that um, we can make it. And I, I I looked up the meaning of faith in um in Wikipedia and it says complete trust or confidence in someone or something, strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion. And and that's important that we have a very strong belief in God and in in in, in his word and stuff, you know, because all our faith is um 
contingent upon what we believe and what God, what God's words has to say. And um, three aspects of faith is who do we believe, what do we believe, and why do we believe it? And 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 when it comes to who do we believe, I, I want to um, and what do we believe. When, when we normally have our um, a, a meeting, a district meeting or something, we talk about our affirmation of faith. And it says, and does anybody know our belief concerning the Bible? What it says about our belief concerning the Bible? We believe the Bible to be the only infallible written word of God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you know... Um, you know what infallible mean, um, Deacon Ivory? That's a good question. It's it's it has no error. It's uh, that's one of the things that immediately comes to mind. There's no error. Yeah, and it can be wrong. So we know that in 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 that context, the word of God is true and real. You know, and it can't be wrong. We can put our total faith and trust and confidence in the word of God. It's important that we understand that that what he says is true and it can't be wrong. Do anybody know our beliefs concerning the church? I see some hands. Well, I'll say we believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. Anybody can tell me our beliefs concerning salvation. We believe that the only means for being cleansed from sin is through repentance, faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and being baptized in water. That's our beliefs concerning the Holy Ghost. But our beliefs oh, concerning sal salvation, we believe that the regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. You know, and, and what we believe, this is our statement of faith. What we believe is very important. And we should all have a, um, a clear understanding of what we believe. You know, and if you don't have uh, our statement of faith, you can always um, take a picture of it, keep it in your phone so that you are always have it available to you. Look it over and stuff so that you can always be, be bringing back to mind what it is that we believe. In case somebody asks you why we believe something, what it is we believe, you will have that right there available to you so that we can always give a clear, concise answer about what it is that we believe. Pastor, you have your um, mic open? Okay. And I'm going to move on to, um, I want to talk about Abraham and Sarah. And could somebody please get um, Genesis 17 and 17 and somebody else, Genesis 18, 12 through 15. And read that for me, please. Any hands? Elder Ivory. Okay, you said Genesis 17 and 17? Yes. It reads, it says, Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And we can see, like, Abraham laughed when um the, when it was told to him that Sarah was going to bear him a child. You know, before this, God has told him that his seed would be as the stars are in the sky. And, and um, rather than, I don't want to get ahead of myself. So read um, Sister Bridget. Genesis 18, 12 through 15. Genesis 18, 12 through 15. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord? 
being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Amen. Sometimes. Oh, one more, I'm sorry. 15. Okay. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Yes. Yes. It, 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 the, the, the irony of it all is that even though God had promised them and Abraham and Sarah a child, you know, they both laughed at this point at that promise. You know, and a lot of times we, we we don't have the faith and trust that we need to have behind what God has has promised us or what He's calling us to do. And we know that um um Sarah had already um given her handmaiden Hagar to Abraham and he had, had a baby with her, you know. So um rather than waiting on God to fulfill the promise, they kind of took matters into their own hands. They didn't have the patience to wait on God to deliver on his promise. And can somebody read Psalms 27 and 14? I have it. It says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalms 27 and 14. Yes, one aspect of our of our walk with God and our faith in God and what he's calling us to do is that we need to have patience. We can't rush God on anything that he's promised us, anything that we need to do. We need to have patience. Abraham and Sarah, you know, by her giving Hagar permission for Abraham to, to have relations with Hagar, it caused problems in the marriage. It caused problems between her, Hagar, and, and, and Ishmael was um, teasing Isaac and stuff. So it caused it, it causes some problems when when we take matters into our own hand, not having the patience that and faith that we need in order to follow, let God do what he has called us to do and, and let God let let God um bring the promise to to, to fruition. So we it's, it's, it's so very important that we exercise patience when we're dealing with um, with the promises of God. A lot of times we want to take matters into our own hands and if we want if we can if make something happen using a shortcut or something, then we, we, we are, we are go in that direction. But you know God 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 when God promises us something, we need to have patience and wait on it. You know, when and when he had um when Abraham when Ishmael was born, he was eighty-four. Abraham was eighty-four. Now here it is at ninety-nine, God saying, Well, I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a um bless you with a seed through Sarah, you know, and this is like fifteen years later. So, you know, now he, he really had to show some patience and stuff. To hold on to that promise of God, and, and and him and Sarah, you know, they laughed at it, but you know, at least they this time they didn't intervene or mess up. They waited on God to deliver on His promise, and we got to remember that we got to have faith and trust in God, no matter how difficult it seems, how impossible things may seem. We still need to have patience and wait on God to deliver on what He's called us to do. And what he's telling us he's going to do for us. And I want to talk about um, faith in giving a tithe. You know, a lot of times, you know, that's that's difficult for us. You know, the giving of our money and stuff. You know, and I, I, I remember when before I came back to the church, my, my um, first lady sent a message back home to me through, through through my wife. She said, tell tell Jay the sin in his tithes and then he'll come to he'll come to um church. <laughs> and I I just laughed. I said, I heard that. <laughs> you know, 
that wasn't no plan of mine. I wasn't planning on coming back to church. And I definitely wasn't going to be paying no tithes, you know. But I, since I've been back, I've been paying my tithes. And Missionary Shandy um, kind of showed me something about not just paying on my my net, but to pay on my gross. Yes. And that's what I started doing. When you know better, you do better. Amen. You know, you got to put total faith and trust in God. A lot of times we feel like uh, that we don't have the money. We, we stretch too thin, so we can't pay our tithes. We can't give a free will offering. But, you know, God has blessed us with something. All he asking is 10% back. And he said he would turn to the sower some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. So not only will once you pay it, he said, already said that he'll give it back to you. So there's no reason for you to hold back on paying your tithe. You've got to have faith and trust in God in, in every aspect of your life. You know, and we, we talk about how God will supply all of our needs. But then when it comes to paying our tithes, we like, no, nah, we, we can't do that because I need to pay this bill or I need this for gas or I need this for food. But we we are, we are quoting an instant how God will take care of all of my my needs. And somebody turned to um, oh Pastor, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Can you unmute yourself, Pastor? Oh, okay. You know, you had moved on. I was just going, um, I was still talking, I was still there before you went on to the next uh, topic. I was really dealing with the weight on the lower piece. Yeah, um, you could go ahead and, and make your comment. Yeah, because it, as it was with Abraham, it is also with us. We ask God for something and we expect God to do it in about an hour and a half. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and if he do it sooner, then it's much more appreciated. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that God doesn't operate on our time. In fact, God doesn't even operate in time. Uh, glory to God. Time is something he created for us. So God does uh, what he's going to do when it is best for us. Our oftentimes in what, we, what we're waiting on is building up our faith. If our, my hearts are right, if our focus on what God is doing is right, uh, in that time frame, we are walking, waiting with expectation. We're waiting for God to come through because our faith is kicked in. Our faith is going. And the Bible lets us know they that wait upon the Lord, he'll renew their strength. Their mind upon waves of the ego, running not being weary, walking not faith. Glory to God. It says, you know, talks to us in that way. Uh, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he'll strengthen your heart. Constantly, we're, we're reminded that uh, what we need to do, and that weight is just not sit there twiddling your thumbs, but your, that weight is be like a waiter, be active. Yes. Be doing something, uh, be serving, glory to God. That's what God requires. That's what the weight is all about, is be serving, be operating, uh, so that when God sends it, glory to God, not only have you not been sitting there uh, waiting on it with your thumb, thumb swiddling on the old folks used to say a watch pot never boils, uh, just sitting there, glory to God, waiting, and that be, makes the time longer. But when we're active and busy, our weight is nowhere near uh, as long as if it was, if we were busy, glory to God, if we're going forward. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Amen. Thank you. Missionary Hannah. Amen. I absolutely love everything that I'm hearing. And I, my comment is around um, faith and giving. And I know a lot of times um, we correlate tithes with giving money, but I think it's more about the obedience to God than it is the the finances, that faith that you have. Um, God is not my, God is, he's, he's an amazing God. He knows that the one thing that's hard for us to separate from, the one thing that'll be a sacrifice for us is our money. And so I, I really see that all about a, obedience and a couple of testimonies just in that realm. Um, I've always did my very best to be a tither. And I look at what God does as a blessing. My son is 19. He's been working since he was 17. 
and very rarely ask me for anything. I mean, he comes and goes, of course he eats all my food, but he, he doesn't really ask for money. He was in between jobs at one point and he got really low and all he wanted was gas money. And then I gave him gas money and the very next week, I see he zelled me back the same amount. And I'm like, what is this? He's like, I told you I'd pay you back, mom. And so that kind of stewardship, to me, that's God giving back to me. Yeah. For my tithe, for my faith and giving. And on Sunday, um, my daughter came to church. She wasn't feeling good. She had a little anxiety. She had a headache. And I went in the back and I you know, told her, you know, you come in the service and that's where the healing is come in and worship. But she loves missionary hope. I think missionary hope is a gift back for my tithes as well. For me, <laughs> sacrificially giving because I watch missionary hope and um, brother Deacon Glenn Ivory sacrifice themselves to serve children, to go out and get them and pull them. And it's a part of them because Missionary Hope goes back and talked to her, probably said the same thing I did. And Christina came and sat in service. Not only did she sit in service, but when the tithing period came up, pastor was talking and she asked me what was her tithe. And we looked at her bank account. She had $14 and 11 cents. And she put a dollar and 41 cents in an envelope. Yes. So I'm thinking when we say faith, like Abraham's faith, when you give sacrificially, it's not always those things back that we think about monetarily, but those things in our family. I, To me, that was just such a blessing, her watching me give and say, what is that? And so I am just, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, and money you can see. So think about that. All right, I'm gonna step back. God bless Amen. you, my Deacon BFF. Thank you for taking <laughs> on such a- Amen. Um, my wife just put, obedience is better than sacrifice. And you know, one thing we need to do is be obedient to the word of God. And like um, Missionary Hunter was saying, you know, we don't always get, get back financially. Sometimes we get back, our health is, is, is better. Our children are covered in, in, in accidents and stuff like that. So it, it comes back to us in different ways. It doesn't always come back in money. But we need to be obedient to the word of God, you know, no matter what. Can somebody read um, Proverbs 11, verses 24 and 25? Right. Uh, Missionary Hunter? In a world that promotes self-gratification and self-preservation, we can be tempted. Oh, am I reading that? No, read Proverbs 24 and 25. Oh. I mean, Proverbs 11, verses 24 and 25. Okay, I'm sorry. I only have my um, paper Bible and I have to sit in the dark for right now. I can't okay. read it. It says, there is one who scatters yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. Poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Amen. So in, in that scripture, we can see where it's the, in a world that promotes self-gratification and self-preservation, we can be tempted to hoard instead of living with giving hearts. However, the Bible says, a person who gives freely gains even more. That's what verse 24 is more or less saying right there. In verse 25, our culture defines prosperity as having more and more. The Bible says that a generous person shall prosper, and whoever refreshes others shall be refreshed. So we know that our giving is, it comes back in different ways. And, and we'll be blessed by, by giving and being obedient to God. You know, one one thing one thing I wanted to ask a question of is that should 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 we put faith and trust in in in, in men or in our brothers and sisters? Anyone? 
Deacon Hooker. Deacon Hooker. I would say no, we put our faith in God. Now, if our brothers and sisters do something or come to our aid, it's because God directed it. That's how I look at it. Anyone else? He can clink scale. I uh, believe that we definitely, we can put our faith in our fellow man and our loved one to a certain degree but that's only what they understand it as far as i i can see it as we're putting our faith in god and we're hoping that our brother and, and sister are of god themselves that we can put some degree of faith in them or not amen sister silver yes sir Sister Silver. I think it's best to have faith in God because people can let you down on your best days. Amen. Deacon and Smothers, then Minister Shandy. I believe that I can put my faith in people because of my faith in God and that he will lead me to whether or not I should have faith in people. If I have complete faith in God, he will direct me for that person. I've had it happen so many times in my life where the spirit of the Lord said, mm -mm. and then other times, not people I barely knew. And the Lord gave me to trust them. So I believe my faith in the Lord will guide me into all truth. Amen. Amen. Minister Shandy. I say no because the the word of God says put not your trust in man. So we can't, you know, putting your faith in somebody, then why do we need God? You know what I mean? So I hope I'm saying that right. I don't trust I can't I can't put my faith in something that that ain't there. I, I just have to trust God in everything. Uh, uh Deacon Ivory. Glenn Ivy. Yeah, God bless you, uh, uh, DK. I, I thank the Lord for you accepting this opportunity to teach because you always bless us. So we thank God for you tonight too, as well. Um, you know, I think it really depends. It, it really depends on the context in which you're asking this question, because the moment you ask that question, the first thing I wanted to look at is the definition of faith. And when we talk about putting faith, it says complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And I and I personally believe that all of us should be able to have uh, trust and confidence in each other. Uh, you know, we're not talking about from the extent of salvation, but being able to, I, I believe uh, Sister Hunter had the confidence to believe that when you said you were gonna do this tonight, that you would show up and do what you did. Uh, otherwise she probably would have been on getting someone else as a backup just in case. Um, so I believe we can, you know, when I, uh, uh, one of the things we look for when we think about our pastor is someone that that's trustworthy and someone that can lead us and, and guide us with the truth of God's word. Um, so I believe we can put, uh, uh, have trust in each other and we should have trust in each other. Now, when we talk about from the standpoint of salvation and absolutes and those things like that we know we're getting into a different realm but just as a general rule uh, um i trust my wife i, I show better trust her. 28 <laughs> years gone on 29 soon to be 30 next year so i, I yes I, I'm, I'm trusting i'm amen. trusting and i have confidence amen uh, some things, uh, so yeah I, i'm saying we can uh but it depends on what context you're using it in amen so, yes i'm saying yes. Missionary Hunter, then Pastor, then First Lady. I was absolutely on the same road with um, Deacon Ivory. I I do um I do put my trust in in people. I do trust people. Um, it's I I always um, testify about it. My mother says that I have rose colored glasses on because I trust people, and even when they give me a reason not to, I'll still trust them again. 
Um, I, I'm overwhelmed with grace sometimes, but I absolutely have faith in my husband. Mm -hmm. He has never, ever said to me that he would do something that he had not done. Um, I can depend on him. I can count on him. Um, he's been a man of his word since I've known him. And so um, I, yeah, I I do put my faith and my trust in, in people. Um, and I, it's just who I am for my salvation. Um, and, you know, for um, supernatural things, of course, I put my faith in God, but I also believe that God can do supernatural things through people. And so that's my response. Amen. Amen. Pastor, before, before you go, Pastor, I'm going to just read this scripture at Psalms 118 and 18. I mean, 118 and 8, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. And the reason why I ask this question is because on Sunday, I wasn't at church, but I, I called Deacon Hooker, I called Deacon Ivory, and I asked them to make sure that they looked out for pastor, make sure that his, his, his iPad, his phone, he had it at the end of service, make sure he had his towel, and you know, that whatever he needed, that they would on point to take care of him. Now, I trusted in the fact that they would do that. Other than that, I would not have called them to do that. So in that aspect, I put faith and trust in them to follow through on what they said they would do. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. No, uh, no uh, let me go oh. before Pastor. Go ahead, First Lady. You know what? Um, I was reading in the Bible here in, in Psalms um, in Psalms 146 and 3, it says, do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. So that's saying, and then it also says, do not put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help from there. And then it says, do not put your trust in princes that are in a son of man whom there is no salvation. So I think what this is saying to me, which I'm might be wrong or right but for the things that you're talking about you know be sure we do this and be sure we do that the maybe that is the kind of faith and trust that we can have like uh missionary said that she put her faith in her husband and, I, and we all do have good husbands we put our faith into our husbands but i think this is for our salvation i cannot put my my salvation faith in my husband i cannot do that because it's saying so clear here to me, do not put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save you. My husband cannot save me. So um. I'm looking at the word to say in this instance, <laughs> <laughs> and I still can't save him. Okay, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But I'm just saying that uh, it's, it's, I think it's two different kinds of uh, faith here. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And faith in my salvation and faith in my friends and faith in people who can do things for me. But the bottom line is for your salvation, you need God. That's where I am. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Uh, let me just say that you read my scripture, Psalm 118 and 8. That's exactly where I was going to go. As soon as, you, as soon as you said it, I said, I'm right there. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. We must understand, I think, like as Deacon Ivory was saying, we have to look at the context in which we talk about putting faith in individuals or trust in individuals, because it, you can't trust in somebody, uh, glory to God, beyond their, their abilities or their capabilities, all right? And God can do anything. anything. So we just need to understand that uh, the context in, in what we put our trust, we all put our trust in somebody at some time glory to god that's just the way it is that's how we live our lives uh and sometimes we put our trust in them and they let us down it's god is the only one that does not fail so don't lose it if they don't come through for you don't lose it if they change their mind in the process <laughs> understand that they're they're human and they're subject to not only make mistakes but to do stuff wrong intentionally but our hope and our trust ultimately is in the Lord, who will never let us fall, who will never let us down. And even if he don't come through when we want him, he's always <laughs> <laughs> God, 
<laughs> Come on, Abraham and Sarah. He's always on time. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Brother O'Meary and Sister Sybil Sattler. Good evening. I mean, I mean, okay. Good evening, saints. I give honor to God Almighty and to my pastor, and my first lady. Uh, actually, for the for the fact that we human beings, uh, we don't know when we are going to leave this world. I, from my own observation, I um, I will put my faith faith in God Almighty because if it was if it was human being, if it was human being like us was to regulate our life, the air that we breathe, I'm telling you that some observation that or oh, some idea that you come up with, if it doesn't correspond with the other person, if the, pers the, other, the other person doesn't buy the idea, they might decide to cut your breath off and like take, stop you from breathing. If 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 the control switch was in, was in their hands, they might decide to, 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 to uh, turn, turn yours off. So, what a, uh, and and for the fact that uh, God Almighty is the one make, making me to go to bed in the in the night and wake up in the morning, he's like he's the, he's the owner of my life. I don't think there is any other anybody I can I can put my faith in if not him because he he's the one waking me waking me up in the morning. A lot of things happen at night, but for the for the fact that he's the one waking me up in the morning, I'm not uh, I'm not in the mud or uh, I'm not they're they're not saying so, so they they will be taking me to the graveyard or whatever. So he's the one, he is the one that I'm so I'm like I'm hundred percent putting my faith on. I know that my wife is always keeping her word. If she says she's she gonna do this, she will do it, and I trust her to 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 an extent because she's my wife and she believes in God Almighty. She believes and she always keep her word. But I'm gonna put my faith in God Almighty. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, brother Clinstale. And then after you, um, we're gonna move on. Yes, uh, mine was kind of a kind of a question because you no, know, I believe that that faith in God is the ultimate faith that we all ought to have. And I believe that God will bring each and every one of us through any storm that is imaginable. But he will bring us to the other side. But my question is, how does that impact belief in yourself? Um, because, you know, the word, you know, some of the stated some scriptures stated where God says not to, to, to have uh, belief in man, but belief in God. But if I'm a man of God and I say that I believe in myself, how does that impact that? Because I believe that God is leading me through all. So I should believe in my ability to, to uh, follow the path that God has laid for me to be able to make it, right? Does that make any sense? If it's not, please let me know. Um, that, It's kind of like... You know, we're all sinners and, and, and saved by grace. And, and we can't really put our total trust in ourselves or in nobody else. Our total faith and trust it has to um, rely on God. It don't matter that we're a man of God. We're still subject to do wrong. But with God, we don't have to worry about that at all because God is going to do right. And He he's, he, we can trust in him. But if we can't. We can, I can't put my total trust in myself because I'm subject to do something that's that that that's going to be displeasing or hurtful to somebody, you know. Because I'm a, I'm a sinner saved by grace, and I and every day I need to ask for forgiveness or for something, you know. So that's the way I see it. Okay. I, I um. I want to um kind of. Go to um, Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. If somebody can read that for me. Deacon and Smothers. Amen. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, 
and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Amen, amen. So um, what I want to talk about here is um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know, um, those are not their given names. Their name was Hananiah, who became Shadrach, Mishael became Meshach, Azariah, Abednego. Now, their names were changed when they came into captivity under the Babylon, Babylonians. Now, one thing I want to say about their name change, people, they may have been able to change their name, but they didn't change their faith and belief in the God that they served. You know what I'm saying? They still were committed to God. You know, and they 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 worship them those other gods, and they didn't bow down to that golden image. But I want to talk about right now. Our God is able, and it's and it says, our God is able. Real Christian faith is knowing the power potential of our God. We believe that He can do anything. And the truth of the matter is that the power of God to raise Jesus from the dead is the same power that works in you and me today. You know, God is able to do anything but fail. You know, and that same power that raised up Jesus, that's in us today. But we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost power in order to enhance our faith and, that, and to make it more stronger and be a, have a total commitment to God. So we know that our God is able. And what I love about um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he says, when he said that they will not bow down to that, to, to that idol and, and serve their other gods. Let me find this. Sorry. And they didn't need to defend themselves. In verse 17, it says, If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy, thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Now, right there, they had a dual faith. A faith in the fact that God is able, and a faith in the fact that even if he don't, they're going to still serve you, you know, and that's where we got to be with our faith. No matter what we go through, no matter what the trials or tribulation is, we're going to continue to serve God. Even when we're faced with difficult situations, we cannot accuse somebody of say they made me do something. Nobody can make you do something. We're free moral agents. You have a choice in the matter each and every single time. But a person can manipulate you. But the final decision is yours. Either you're going to hold on to your faith or you're going to let go and give in. You know, they stood firm in their faith and in their belief, even to the point of death. And, and that's where we got to be with our faith. You know, sometimes when we go through trials and tribulations, uh, we we get disappointed in church. We, we Our faith is, is shaky. Our faith gets to the point where we won't even show up. We won't even follow through on our commitments that we made. So we got to, no matter what it is, God is trying to make us stronger. He's trying to prepare us to do a greater work in, for him and in him. So we got to remember, no matter what it is we're faced with, that God is there for us. And we got to hold on to our faith. We cannot compromise it for any uh, any reason at all. It, and I like the but, but if not. Can somebody read the top portion of But If Not? I'll read it. If we had left it at the first two only, we have which has been termed the prosperity gospel. That's what I'm reading. The belief that God's will is always for our earthly health and wealth. However, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego believed that God could be trusted, but even if he had not rescued them, 
they were still going to believe and trust in him. And I'm going to finish it. They refused to bargain with God. See, we often say, I'll believe God only if. And then we fill in the blanks with what we want from him. But God says that we need to believe him even if, not only if, even if <laughs> he don't do what we asking him to do. We still need to believe him. This is where the rubber meets the road with our faith. Sometimes God is glorified when he heals and delivers. Sometimes God is glorified when the answer is no. And the healing is not on the side on this side of eternity. So a lot of times, um, I, I, I've heard people, I uh, know some people that have been disappointed with, with, with outcomes of, 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 of God not promoting them, not mm -hmm. giving them what they think they deserve. And, you know, they'll stop serving God. They'll stop, they won't follow through on their commitments and stuff. You know, sometimes we got to be patient with God and wait. And, and and God knows what's best for us. We don't always know what's best for us. So when it comes to what, what we need and what God is willing to do, he's trying to grow us up and get us prepared to do something. What, what we what we want to need is, and doesn't always fall within the will of God. So even if he don't deliver us, even if he don't do what we want him to do, we still got to hold on to our faith no matter what, you know, because we're going to have some disappointments. We're going to have some trials and tribulations. And we, we when things are not going to go our way, but we still need to be totally committed to God. And especially, especially when things don't go our way, we got to step up our faith and step up our commitment, step up our worship, step up our praise, in order to appreciate what God is doing for us. You know, we really need to do that. Sister Deaconess Beverly, I saw your hand up, and then Missionary Hope Ivory. Uh, I just wanted to comment just on what you were saying. And that behavior is a perfect example. When we don't get what we want, then we behave in a certain manner. So we haven't grown up yet. We aren't ready. Because if we <laughs> were ready... We would we wouldn't behave in that manner. So you know, when God is looking at us again, He can see the whole picture. He already know how you gonna act, and, <laughs> and 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 you aren't ready to deal with that because we we're talking as we were talking about earlier, the faith and trust and patience that is needed when you believe in God. So that that when you were talking right there, that when you said. Well, when you don't get what you want, then you go like a spoiled child. Yes. How, how is a spoiled child going to lead? You know, I mean, we've seen this in our government and in our leadership around. You know, I don't get my way. I'm going to act out, you know. So that just tells me that, you know, it just, that's why. The reason why you aren't where in the place that you think you should be is because you're not ready. Amen. Okay, that's all I have to say. And Amen. this is amazing. I love you. I love you too. Missionary Ivory, Hope Ivory. Um, praise God. What really dropped in my spirit, and thank you, I'm thoroughly enjoying this Bible study. In Romans 10 and 7, it says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, and that our faith is, can be increased. Right? And that's why it's important to fellowship ourselves with the saints and hear the word of God because that is increasing our faith. And that's just what dropped in my spirit. Amen. And I thank you. You know, um, there's some scriptures that um, if we want to build up and build our faith up and, and have a, 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 a deeper, more personal relationship with God, we need to get into his word. Because in his word, there's so many promises he made to us about what he'll do for us. In, in Romans 8 and 28, it says, somebody can get eight, Romans 8 and 28, and somebody get um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. And we know that all things work together 
for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. It's Romans 8, 28. Amen. You know, when God make that, that promise to us, that should enhance our faith. Our faith should never be shaken because no matter what it is that we're going through, it's working for our good. We may not understand it, we may not see it, and we may not realize it. But if we can stand it on the word of God, and we know his word is infallible because none, none of it is wrong, then we know it's all working for our good. We need to get into that mindset that no matter what it is we're going through, we're going to continue to praise, lift him up, and worship God. Somebody give second, second Corinthians 5 and 17. For if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. So that's another promise of God. You know, we're a new creation in God. We're not the same anymore. We, we, we're different. And, and I just thank God for that. Somebody get Matthew. 21 and 28, and somebody get Matthew 25 and 23. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Elder Ivory. Matthew's 21 and 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first yeah, and said, right. Son, right. go work today in my vineyard. Oh, that's not right. I'm sorry. Okay. It's, it's, that's not the scripture I want. But can you get Matthew 25 and 23? Let me read that, Dick, uh, Dick and Burnett. This is the uh, Okay. Matthew 25, 23 says, <clears throat> His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Now, that, that's another promise from God. You know, if you be faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over many. You know, and so no matter what it is we go through, we got to remain faithful to God. In, in our worship, in our service, in our walk, in our commitments. We need to remain faithful to God and follow through on everything that God is calling us to do. And it's going to enhance our faith. By, by getting into his word, by participating in Sunday school, by being on Bible study and participating, it's going to enhance our faith. It's going to make it more deeper and more personal. And we need to spend time in prayer also, you know, that's that's going to help us out also grow in our faith. So we have so many different things that we can do to grow our faith where we can have a better and a deeper understanding. But the, we got to read the word of God because he has so many promises in his word that, that assures us that he'll be there for us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And, and somebody get Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. It is a very familiar scripture. I've got it. It says, okay. trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Now that's something that we need to do. And every, everything that we do, we need to trust in the Lord. We need him to acknowledge our, our ways. He need to direct our path. We, we shouldn't be leaning upon our own understanding, making de decisions that we're not capable of making because we're going to be making mistakes. We need to ask God for guidance and direction in, ev in everything that we do so that we can have the proper guidance. It said the Holy Ghost will lead us into all truth. So we need to make sure that we're counting, leaning on God for direction. And all these, all these promises are directions are in his word. We need to study this word. I, I can't emphasize it enough 
how we need to study his word so that we understand what it is that God expects from us so that our faith to be, be, be enhanced and our faith can grow so that God can use us. So, um, we're at 828. So, um, that's kind of all that I have right now. You know, I, I just thank you guys for this opportunity to teach. You know, I was a nervous wreck all week, you know, because, you know, I, I, I thank all those that encouraged me and, 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 and just your words of encouragement mean so much to me because, um, I, 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 I don't really have the confidence. I don't, I don't want to never come off as arrogant or thinking that I know too much or take things for granted, you know, but I do want to grow and I do want God to use me in a, in a, in a better way. So I'm willing to step out in faith and let him use me when I get an assignment, no matter how nervous, how, um, if I, I might get, I'm going to follow through and do the best that I can. You know, I'm, I'm not that person that says no to assignments, especially when it comes from pastor. You know, I have told pastor no sometimes when he asks me to do something. <laughs> but for the most part, if he give me an assignment, I'm, I'm going to follow through with it. You know, and, 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 and I just, um, like I say, I just thank you guys for this time. I pray that you got something that you could use and um, hopefully your faith will be enhanced and we can have a um, a better understanding of what God expects from us. So I just thank you. Oh, Sister Lisa and Mother Deaconess Beverly and Mother Carpenter. This, was, hand. this was absolutely wonderful. And I think um, we know look at us we get so excited with god's word you know and i know how you feel sister uh jessica and myself we was all you know because you <laughs> what we want to do because it's not about us and we realize that and but god comes in and we pray and we study and he uses us we open up ourselves to be used and that's what that's the key there you know, so you did a phenomenal, you got 42 people here. We, it is God's word. We are all like Sunday school is growing. This is growing. We know. And, and it just, and we get excited. I'm excited. You know, God's word is exciting. Like you said, the promises, our faith in him, you know, so I look, I am so excited. This, this series, I mean, I'm always excited about, but this series <laughs> has done something because you know what it is? It's about internal. It's spiritual. It's about the spirit part. So as strong, you know, so it's yeah. feeding our spirit. So that makes us stronger. And that's what we need. So anyway, I just want to tell you that your words were very encouraging. You know, God's, you know, you delivered his word like he you wanted to be delivered. I, I went to that scripture, um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and I was like, and then when you said, I was like, oh, you know that ain't nothing but the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you know, yes. you that scripture, for you know, I mean, anyway. I thank God for this. I thank God for you. I thank God for all of you. I am so very excited um, about um, Bible study. It's just, it's where we get to really, as you say, we really get to learn. And then, you know, you start, scriptures start come to our remembrance and stuff like that. So, you know, that's like, oh, you know, I'm doing good. I'm being a good soul. <laughs> Amen. So I'm just, you know, that's just, you, when you're used by God, there is nothing but joy. And you know, that's mine, joy. You know, Amen. and what, is, what what gives us our strength? Joy. Joy. <laughs> and the, you know, the work, it's just, I got to stop now because, <laughs> Miss <Mr. laughs> Dad, don't preach. I'm not here to preach. I was here just to tell you <laughs> that I thought this was wonderful. And I enjoy all of, I enjoy all the teaching. And I'm so thankful to Pastor for giving us all the, an opportunity. You know, it just, it just, um, when you give us that opportunity, yes. it's your confidence and, you know, and it's not the faith that you have in God, but the faith that you have in us to give us that opportunity to know that we're going to do what we're supposed to do and do it well. So anyway, thank you so much for letting me share that. Amen. Amen. Mother Carpenter. Unmute yourself, Mother. 
While she's unmuting, I just want to say I am so proud, godly proud of my husband, Deacon Burnett. Amen. And I'm Missionary Green, thank you for putting that in the chat. Activate your faith. Amen. We know we talked about that on last month. Amen. Activate your faith. Unmute yourself, Mother Carpenter. And we have to turn it over to Pastor in just a minute. Amen. Mother Carpenter. Okay. Deacon Hooker. Oh. Go ahead, Deacon Hooker. Oh, I just want to say I really appreciate uh, this on tonight. And I always tell Deacon Jay how I appreciate him. He said he was nervous. I I, I, it, I just can't imagine him being nervous because he comes on so strong, you know, and he's always, he, he's always encouraging everybody else. But Deacon, great job. You know, I mean, I really appreciate you. I tell you all the time. I mean, I could keep on telling you, but I'm not. Not right now, because you know somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> somebody else want to come in, but I just want to say once again, thank you. I appreciate this. I, I I learn all the time when Pastor get up. I learn you get up. I learn anybody because I tell them all the time. As I get older, it's hard to hold a lot of thoughts yes. in my mind, so I write it down. That's that's all. Thank you for this time. Okay. Yes. Go, go yes. ahead, mother. Uh, Okay, all I wanted to say is that you, I enjoyed you very much, even though you were studying all the week. But I thought about this when you were saying about patience. It said, please be patient with me. God is not through with you yet. When God gets through with you, I just thought about that. And I know that you have, I know that you have, have faith because anytime you come to, to six o'clock morning prayer before you go to work. I know you got faith. I know you got patience. And I am glad to see everything that you're doing. And I'm very proud of this lesson tonight about faith. I really am and I really enjoyed it. And we do learn, like Sister Beverly said, we learn, we're excited about the word. Things that we haven't heard about, I'm excited about it too. And I'm just laying here and I know I have faith because I'm going to go under the procedure again. And I know God is going to bring me out. He's yes. going to bring me out. He's going to bring me out. Amen. And yes, I got to just I just got to have patience. Because I know he's not through with me yet. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mother. I, just thank, I thank you for yeah, Miss, Mr. Manish, as Mother McCoy Amen. said. <laughs> Mr. Manish. <laughs> Bless you, Mother. Thank God for everybody. Brother Deacon, uh, you all, come on, put some hearts up and hands up. Glory to God and uh, clap. Glory to God. Let's celebrate uh, Deacon Burnett on his first time teaching Bible study. Amen. So we honor the Lord for you, man. You did a fantastic job. Clearly, your study uh, was was uh, has manifested itself, has shown itself. Glory to God. Um, and uh, you're a reader. And uh, uh, I always talk about readers are leaders and uh, leaders are learners. And so you've done a wonderful job and I want to up, share that with you. I do want to go back, ask everybody to notice that I went back and changed the scripture I put in as related to adding to your faith. Uh, I put first Peter initially, but it's second Peter one, uh, five through eight, uh, not, not first Peter, it's second Peter. And so I went back and changed that, but I want everybody to get that because that adds depth to your faith. Glory to God. It adds maturity and growth. And uh, uh, so I wanted to, to, to put that in there because I had the wrong one, had first Peter at the first, uh, my finger went crooked. Anyway, I want to say to all of y'all, praise God for your uh, love uh, of God's word, your desire to continue to learn God's word, uh, to study God's word. Uh, this is so, so critical, so important. Uh, glory to God, even as we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, glory to God, Spirit of God and His fruit, His attributes that manifest themselves in our lives. So thank God for each one of you and your diligence, commitment, and faithfulness, amen, to be a part of the Bible study. Well, let me just share that there's so much going on with us, um, and I know we've got some announcements, but while we're doing that, let me ask, uh, let me ask this. Um, this time, very, very sincerely, and I'm going to ask everybody to please make a uh, con contribution to Bible study tonight. Uh, 
the the contributions have been inconsistent. Glory to God, and we need to do this. So I'm going to ask everybody to sow into ministry. If you can sow ten dollars or twenty dollars, whatever you can, make that commitment tonight and make that sow that seed. Glory to God. Um, and um, I'm going to ask you to do that. I'm going to sow for me and my wife each $25. Glory to God, because I want, uh, we've got to do some things. The church has got to kind of got to move forward and pay the bills, and get things done. Amen. And for you, it benefits you because you sow into this world. And when you sow into something, it has greater meaning. and You hold on to it even more. So, glory to God, I'm going to ask you to do that tonight. Uh, and then I'm going to turn this over to whomever is going to be giving us our announcements.